Hello traders and welcome to a new day trading strategy video of mine. In today's video we're going to be talking about how to practice. Uh, and as you can probably notice this is a video that is being done uh, outside. It's a really nice day today and I'd rather not film my office on a really nice day. So that is why we're going to be doing this video outside. Additionally I just got a new pop filter from Ophonics, uh, the company, that I think is going to improve the uh, audio quality uh, of the microphone as well. So why am I making another video about practice? Because uh, my past two video videos, price action volume practice, uh, part one and part two, have both naturally been about practice. I really believe that to become a better trader, you need to become a better, uh, better at uh, managing your emotions and better at pattern recognition. And managing your emotions comes with experience. But I would say that if you want to better your pattern recognition, most people are going to tell you just trade, just uh, get some market experience, do some forward testing where you make a prediction, see if you're right a few hours, a few days, a few weeks later. Um, but direct feedback practice is really the type of practice that's going to make you much stronger at market pattern recognition. Uh, so there's actually science behind direct feedback and deliberate practice and how this works. So what I pulled up here was a quote from the article titled, Here's What Practicing Does to Your Brain and How to Do It Right by Wanda Thibodeau. Uh, I'm not going to read this entire quote because uh, I think you guys can read for yourselves. But basically what it's saying is that the more you practice, the quicker your brain can send um, neurological responses. I'm, I'm not a scientist, so I don't know exactly, uh, you know, uh, the correct wording for it, but basically it creates a super highway of electrical signals that go throughout your body and to your mind. Um, so what that means is that the more you practice looking at historical information, which we're going to get to later in the video, uh, the better you're going to get in the future at recognizing those types of patterns when they occur and then knowing how to execute on those patterns as well. So here are four little tips for practice that uh, she also put on her article as well, which talks about just, I think, basic things for how to maximize a practice session, um, removing distractions. So that means, you know, not multitasking on YouTube, Reddit, and Discord, and, you know, uh, other things as well. Start slowly, if, especially if you're a new trader. Uh, you might not want to fly through the practice examples. Uh, take breaks. I would recommend probably taking a break every half hour uh, after a practice session. And of course, I think the last one is a little bit more uh, holistic, but it, can, it still could be used um, quite well. I would, I would change the last one to visualize what you need to do and remember to be uh, visualize the market that you think is going to occur. And eventually over time, you're going to get to the level where you're going to be predicting and visualizing those future markets uh, pretty well. So how exactly does this translate into something that you can do right now or you know in a few hours if you want to procrastinate on your practice well you want to pick a single trading strategy so what I mean by that is let's say that you want to get better at trading with the relative strength index RSI what you can do is you can go back in time and manual backtest is the formal term for what it's called and simulate trading positions or just simply pick bullish or bearish on results uh, uh, from the past and see how you would have done uh, using that. I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. Another way you could do it as well that I've been doing a lot on, on my videos is you could just look at price action volume, make short term predictions and then go through those predictions to see if you're correct. So what this means on here is uh, this. The first thing that we're going to do is hit bar replay. So this is going to allow us to go back in time to actually practice. And then the second thing that we're going to do is hit the go to tool, which is located in the bottom part of trading view down to here. I think that this is available for free users, but I'm not exactly sure uh, if free users can go back in time as much as premium users or pro users, but uh, you can check that out for yourself. So how exactly one would do this would be, of course, to go to trading view. I'm going to hit the bar replay tool. Then I'm going to hit this go to and I'm on the five minute time frame because I find that this is nice to practice on. The one hour time frame, uh, if you practice on it, you might already know what happens, but the five minutes, pretty specific, you probably do not. So what I do is I just go as far back as I possibly can, hit a random point, 
And then after I hit that, I am going to wait for it to load. It's probably not going to go back to January 9th. It's going to go back as far as it possibly can. Uh, but when it does, as you can see, it went back to um, 429 here. I'm just going to hit this right here. And I did see a little bit of this price information, so I'm going to want that to, to, to play first. But let's say here that I wanted to practice price action and uh, volume. What I would do is, let's say, okay, so yeah, I already I know what happens here. And now I really don't know what happens here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause it, which I did. It's just it's still buffering a little bit. I'm going to go to text notes. And text notes is a really helpful tool that one can use when they're practicing on trading view. You hit new. I'm just going to type in practice. Uh, trading practice and with this I'm gonna go here I'm gonna directly ap apply these methods here of picking a single strategy going back in time and then simulating a position or just making a bullish bearish prediction and then recording my results and after 30 minutes seeing how I do with my results so an example of that here would be let's say that I think uh, just for random price is more likely to move below support than it is to move above this resistance here based on recent volume spike um, something like that basically so what I would do is I would type in one I would say bearish and it doesn't matter if I'm really right or wrong with this one but let's see if I'm uh, right or wrong So if price goes above here, then I would be wrong. And if price goes below here, then I would be right. And we'll see. So it looks like so far, yep. Okay, so now it's right. Okay, so the first example, I would give myself a check. Uh, so I'm gonna do that, little check right there. And yeah, so that was the first example and I got that one right. And then for the next you know, 28, 29 minutes, I'm just gonna keep making predictions like that. Uh, I could even be more specific. I could say something like, price is likely to move slightly above resistance here and then go back down so what I would type in would be um, bullish above resist uh, I would say fake out fake out above resistance then back down something like that um, it just completely random threw that out there I don't know if that's don't think that's gonna happen but we'll see uh, if that does happen and if price goes below support, then I would be wrong. So we did go, or very much above uh, resistance, of course, if price kept going higher. So let's see if I'm right here. Okay, so I actually got that one right as well. Did not expect to get that one. I just kind of randomly threw that one out there. And I don't really remember what happened in May, May 1st. As strange as that sounds, I haven't really been looking at the markets recently. Um, yeah, so that one was right, and you would just keep doing this. And this would be how to do it for um, simulating position, uh, I mean, uh, for selecting bear, bullish or bearish. But if you would like to do more direct practice and actually pretend like you were actually trading, then what you could do is pretend open a long position. So you would say, okay, I'm going to put my buy limit order, uh, let's do this, buy limit order at, let's say, right below this support point. And the really good thing about this is that there's no penalty for being wrong. You're not going to lose any money because, of course, this these moves already happened. And uh, this is going to work best if you have no memory of what happened on the time frame that you're back testing. So let's say I put my buy order at 88.90. And let's say uh, a stop loss at 88.19. Uh, TP at, I think, a fair take profit would be... Uh, let's say 89.80. Okay, so basically what I just did here is <clears throat> I have a take profit of about 90 uh, dollars in uh, if if I if I get to that, and a loss about 60. So that's about uh, pardon me, a loss about 70. So that's about risking 90 to win, risking 70 to win 90. So that this trade would have to work. S seven out of 16 times by my math uh, you guys can check if that math is right 
But yep, so we'll see. And, and it's this kind of practice that can just help. So yep, I would have gotten filled here with uh, 8980. And again, my stop loss is at 8819. I do not care if that gets hit. Uh, but my take profit is at uh, 8980. That has been hit. And okay, check. So, so far with just practicing here, I've gotten uh, three out of three. So let's say that I want to do more position practice. Let's say that I think that that's a volume spike and that price is going to go slightly up and then it's going to come back down. Let's say I want to put a sell limit order, you know, shorting. Can't type. <laughs> sell limit order at, let's do right above 9K to hit any stop losses that there might be at 9,007. Just just because. SL, I think a fair stop loss would be about 90.55, I think is good. And TP. Uh, TP at, uh, okay, so if I'm shorting this, I'm gonna wanna probably take profit when price breaks down to here. So, you know, TP at, uh, I'd say 88.01. So we'll see if I get filled, first of all. <clears throat> all right, so I did just get filled and it looks like my stop loss did not get hit. SL at 90.55, nope. Did not get hit. Uh, TP at 88.01. So let's see if price goes to my my take profit or my stop loss first. Um, I'm risking 50, about 50, to win. Uh, looks like about, uh, yeah, that's a pretty big win. Risking 50 to win 200 by my math, of around 200. So that's like a, I'd have to win this trade 20% uh, of the time because that would be uh, 50 plus 200, 50 divided by 50 plus 200, that'd be 50 divided by 250, which would be 20%. Uh, so this trade would have to, this sh short trade would have to work 20% of the time for me to be break even. So we'll see. Price could just go higher. So price does go higher and my stop loss would have triggered here and that's fine. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a X. Uh, so this one was wrong. I could even, yeah. So this one would have been wrong and I could just type in Y. I could, uh, what I might type in is failure of bears to pick up momentum. Plus, uh, let's say lack of bull volume spike. Because I'm not really seeing, well until here of course, here this isn't really, looks like all the traders bought in. I mean, here is a major volume spike, but I'm not really seeing a major volume spike here or here. So when you don't see a major volume spike, typically the market just continues moving in that direction. Uh, and we're going to need to see more than one volume spike. Just one is probably not good enough. This one looks a little bit better. So that's the reason why I you know, got that one wrong. And then to, just to close it off, let's say I want to go back to bullish or bearish. And I say, um, I believe that price is going to move below support and not move above resistance. Uh, it's going to move support first before it moves below res uh, above resistance. So move below support. And let's see if I'm right. So looks like so far we're good. Okay, so then we do see a move above resistance. So that one would be wrong. I could just say reason being that my prediction was wrong was we had a major we had uh some uh uh strong oversold volume with low tails as you can see here we, we have we have a few volume spikes here we have uh low tails here that we don't really see many low tails here we see a lot of tails here and a tail here so price you know naturally goes upward that's the reason that that one was uh wrong Yeah, so this is exactly how one would practice with um, using TradingView and just using this back testing that can really honestly, this is how you can become better at pattern recognition, better at trading, better at getting your orders filled. Um, I mean, honestly, there's just no harm to taking a half hour or doing two or three sessions a day of, you know, an hour a day of just practicing. You could add on any indicator you want. I could add, uh, you know, money flow. Right here. I could add in money flow and I could just switch, you know, instead of doing price action volume practice, let's say it's my second session of practice, I could tr practice money flow. So let me just play and I'm going to buy whenever MFI goes oversold. So 
So MFI still hasn't gone oversold. Okay. So we would have bought in uh, here. I don't like doing this, the we would have bought in thing. So instead of saying we would have bought in, let me go to the next oversold. Probably would have sold there. So when MFI goes oversold, I'm going to pause it. I'm going to simulate a position. So let's say that I want to buy in if price goes to 90.99, you know, for example. Uh, wouldn't I don't know if I, I don't think I would have gotten filled here. Uh, price did not go down to 90.99 before going up, but it did go up, which was a, an accurate pr um, prediction anyway. So this is the type of practice, again, that you'd be doing with indicators. You would just add an indicator, uh, type it into your little notes, and uh, you know, see if you're right. And if you're wrong, you could write a reason why, and that might help as well. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, happy summer.